so it's a cool February here in Amman and I'm going to find some indoor activities to do today and one of them is going to go to the Jordan Museum which costs 5 JD it's not included in the Jordan Pass so Al's out of town so that's why I'm going to entertain myself um, for today and we're not going to you know when I'm with him we will go to the north to the south to the east um, but today indoor activities Let's start with the Jordan Museum, maybe the uh, amphitheatre, the Roman theatre, and uh, definitely going to head to the Souk because I would need to buy a new suitcase so I can leave things here. So uh, listen for those taxis. Going to catch a taxi. Let's see if they can understand me or if I have to put it on um, Google Map for the address to show them where I want to go. Al is busy today, so I don't have a private driver. So I thought I'd just catch a taxi in because it's cold, do some indoor activities. So I was going to go to the Jordan Museum, check it out, lose on Tuesday. I thought, okay, I will go to the Royal Automobile Museum. Closed on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, Google, 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 what to do on the in, on an indoor day, on a rainy day, or a cold day? The Royal Tank Museum. Never been there. Google it. Closed on Tuesdays. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna have to do some outdoor activities today. Head to the Roman Theatre, head to the Sook, <laughs> and see how the day <laughs> goes. Hmm, listening for those taxis. I'm on third circle. There'll be a taxi coming around anytime soon. <laughs> there we go taxi so I will uh, see what today brings we don't have to die getting there sir so we're off to uh, the Roman amphitheater Roman theater we've just got to second circle in no time at all after a horn battle with a local in a car so taxi on the meter starts at 35 34 piastre zoom down the streets. So that taxi ride was on the meter, 1.25 Jordanian dinar. I handed him two and he didn't offer me any change. <laughs> so that was what a two dinar ride looked like. Pretty terrifying and very noisy. Here's the Roman amphitheatre, it's included in the Jordan Pass. It's cost one or two JD if you don't have a Jordan Pass. So it has the amphitheatre and it has two little museums. Let's see if they're open today. The Roman amphitheatre dedicated to Emperor Antonio Pius, 138 AD. Good morning. Good morning. You are very welcome. Thank you, sir. The Roman amphitheatre from um, Roman times, 138 for Empress Emperor Antonio Pius, 6,000 seat theatre. What the uh, wall can do, this lower wall, it's a whispering wall, so if somebody was to um, come over to this side, a person directly on the other side would be able to hear exactly what they were saying. It's uh, an engineering marvel. I have visited the Roman Amphitheatre probably four or five times now. And I have to admit something that I have never noticed before. It's accessible. This ramp looks as if it's been there for a very long time. I clearly didn't notice it previously. So uh, guests in wheelchairs or people with pushchairs can come and still enjoy this space. This space up here would be the stage. And those niches just down there would be where the lights were. So let's go down on this ramp and uh, have a look at from there. 
So down here, you can see where the lights were. They were probably oil or candle, and the stage would have been over there. And this is the centre point, maybe. Maybe one of the ladies can sing for us. I have gone up to the second layer, but I just get nosebleeds. I'm just not good with heights. Having a closer look at the seating system, I can see on this third level here a large flat area with just two seats. That would tell me that this would be where the dignitaries would be and there would be a different seating system and so they'd only have to walk up a couple of steps to the their seating instead of going way up to the gods up there into the bleachers into the nosebleed seats. One thing you have to be pretty conscious of uh, when you're a visitor here in Jordan is that most people want some form of money. So if young people come and or ask you if they want you to take their photo, hello buddy, how are you? Um, they will ask you for money once they've taken your photo with your camera. It's um, just touting basically for business and uh, people, young people are around the major antiquities uh, to do, and do that, especially Jerash around the uh, Temple of Zeus. The other thing is guides. You can hire a guide and then they will ask you for a tip, not an official amount of money, and then whatever money that you give them, it's never going to be enough. And um, so at different times, at different antiquities, um, I've said no, I didn't want the guide, but they still tag along and then they comment and they, you know. And so I think it must have been at Karak Castle um, and then I literally, it was like the end of my trip and I didn't have much cash on me and I only had a random few US dollars, Australian dollars and I wanted to keep my JDs. So I just gave him some really humiliating amount, like about seven Australian dollars or um, 10 US dollars or something like that major, which is not a reasonable fee, but I didn't want the service, but because they still talked to you and told you this is that and this is something else you know you then do feel emotionally obliged to uh, tip them so it's really important right from the beginning just like when I was at the um, Citadel the other day um, as I was standing at the station showing my Jordan Pass this guy was standing near me as I walked away he said do you want a guide I said no thank you I don't want a guide um, I've been here before and he goes, well, thank you for wasting my time. Actually, buddy, I didn't waste your time. You came up to me touting business and I didn't accept your offer. So my time wasn't wasted. And I walked in. Once again, this is a service-based country. So if you do come here, be expected to pay for every little thing. It's a great place to visit. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> so this second century Roman amphitheatre um, here in Amman, which originally was called Philadelphia at the time, which is a Decapolis city. Decapolis means ten, deci, ten, and um, so between. Uh, Pella, Abila in the north, uh, Petra to the south, um, a, a part of the ancient road from Damascus and the ancient Silk Road. And so these ten cities were basically Roman fortifications that were kind of averagely evenly spaced um, for the defence of this region. So as you're looking at the basic structure of a Roman amphitheater, it has the semicircular seating area, but then you have the front of the stage, which is called a procastrium. 
Then you also have the orchestra pit and then this seating area is a cave, C-A-V-A-E, a cave, the seating area. In this one there is 44 rows of seating area in three different um, layers. So I'm going to move off my space here in the cave. I'm going to walk down past that procrastium. I'm going to go over near that vaulted archway. That, that's where our museum is, but that is where the um, players would have entered from. Absolutely fabulous. So after you enter the museum, this is the, um, the folk museum. So you're greeted with different costumes, starting from the Desert Patrol through to different abayas from different traditional areas. You come through to a jewellery section. So it's not uncommon when you look at Bedouin stones or Bedouin jewellery that it is just rough stones. It's not really um, crafted stones. But they do intricate beadwork with necklaces and placements and also on hats, head coverings. Just spectacular. Trues women would wear something like this, a metal die-cast headwear and Druze were from Syria. This type of headwear would have come from South Palestine, the Negev Desert, and uh, some of the coins would be from the period of um, the British Mandate. That central piece would be a head ornament and it would have been worn um, to the back of the head and it's surrounded there with uh, two chokers those uh, large metal sections would clasp together. Some of the region's jewellery looks uh, pretty fierce, having a lot of those raised areas on them. So these are bracelets. interesting very nice a very small display there of hairpins and uh, earrings interesting an example of a Bedouin abaya this has such interesting intricate um, needlework there so this museum only has three or four small rooms but this one where the mosaic are, it is part of the side corridors that would have allowed access to the amphitheater. Mosaics of the fruit bowl. Symmetrical designs, a running stag, very handsome. I've entered into the second museum now. This one is the folklore one. The other one was of uh, traditions, and this one has little scenes of life in the Arab world. Oh, that scene just activated, my water started running. I'm scared to look out of it. Let's just check down. She is milk shaking. Oh, I wonder if we're getting the milk. 
Yeah, yes, we are. We're getting the milk and then we shake the milk. Yes, we just separate it. Yeah. Um, yogurt, maybe? This is something you'll see a lot of in Jordan. We have to watch for grinding in the coffee. Something else you'll see a lot in Jordan. <laughs> Shisha pipes for smoking. To produce all of those beautifully coloured rugs that you see around the Middle East. You would need somebody to weave them on a loom, a large loom like this, or a vertical loom such as this. Food is very important for every civilization, especially uh, the Bedouins who are a very social people. So um, agricultural, we have an oven, and then we have a wheat thrasher looks like a pretty ancient torture chamber but you would just thrash the wheat over here and the wheat would come away, separate. Wheat would have to be then ground into a finer powder for the bread and then that would be kneaded in pots like this. And there's a demonstration of a lady um, grinding coffee beans in a coffee grinder. So I've actually dawdled today. Um, you can do this whole uh, Roman theatre and the two museums in about half an hour. Um, just buzz in, buzz out. But I just wanted to spend some time just to enjoy the atmosphere. Even though I didn't walk up many of those 42 layers. <laughs> I have done in the past and it's just beautiful. The day's turning out much warmer than I anticipated. So uh, it's, I don't need to... Uh, rush and find some indoor activities today so uh, stay safe everybody and happy travels <laughs>